Hey everyone. Now recently I was setting up a computer here and in, in conjunction with the router and I had a bit of an issue with the bridging of it. So I've got two interfaces and I had them as a bridge but there was an error. So first of all I'll show you what I've got set up and why I'm doing it and then I'll show you what happened and how I got around it. Okay so here's what I've got going on. I've got a six port router here. Okay so one of them is the LAN, one of them is the WAN and some are some other networks. So I'll start at the start. The NBN comes in here so that's from the fiber over there, NBN comes into this port on the patch, and before, I used to have it going into the switch, just on a VLAN for itself, going through to the router. But what I've got here is I've got it going directly to this other patch panel, which goes up to the WAN interface on the router. And the reason I've got that like that is so, if this switch gets taken out, or if I reboot it or something happens, the router is still on the internet, so it doesn't rely on that switch there. Now what I've got here is a web server. So I've got this web server here, which you can notice has got two ports. So rather than having the web, you know, the DMZ network come out of the router here and go into the switch somewhere, and then that go to the, the web server, what I've got is the web server VLAN on the router going directly to one of these ports here. And what I've got is these two ports bridged, so it's basically like a two port switch, I've got them bridged, and then it goes from there and goes into the switch. So that way, again, if the switch gets taken out, the web server will still be online because the router will have a direct connection to the outside world and it's got a direct connection to the web, web server. So anyway, what happened when I set all this up, the normal way is it wasn't actually sending frames through like a normal two-port switch, like a bridge. So I'll show you on the computer what was happening and what was causing it. Okay, so here's the web server. And I'll just show you the interfaces that I've got. You can see these two here, the two physical ones that I showed you, and I've got this bridge adapter here. So I'll show you how I set that up. Interfaces. So here, I, here they are, just set to manual, which means don't do much with them. They're there. And then I set up the bridge adapter and give it a static IP address and say they're the members of it. So that basically makes it a two port bridge with those interfaces. <coughs> Now you probably noticed I've got a whole bunch of other things here too. That's because I've got Docker running on here. And it, there you can see the Docker thing there, and it makes all these adapters here. So they're not things I'm directly concerned with, just that the, the Docker things are running behind it, but they come into this. So if I have a look at NFT rule set, uh, rule set, you can see here I've got a whole bunch of things, and as it says, it's managed by, by that, do not touch. Now I didn't make these rules, these automatically happen by Docker. So when it makes Docker containers, all the shit gets added in here. And you can see those IP addresses, 172 stuff. You can see they're the addresses that they've got going for them. So I'm not too concerned about them. I'm just concerned about this one here. So as I said, that bridge, bridge interface includes those two physical ones. So in my mind, it should just forward frames through like a normal switch does. And it used to do that until I put Docker on. So that made me think there's got to be something in these rules here. And it turns out, if you look at, I'll find it for you. I will fucking find the count. Where is it? Here. So this has a policy of dropping. So it'll drop anything that's not listed to accept. And it's got some funky things going on here. But you'll see, if nothing specific, it'll drop it. Now, I had to add this one here. And I never used to have to do that before. But basically, what it's saying is if the input interface is the bridge, and the output interface is the bridge, accept it. Now that seemed a bit strange to me because I'm like, well, it's the same interface, it's going in and out. And if I'm put, if I'm passing frames through that aren't for this host, let me show you the let me show you the old diagram here. In my mind, they were coming in here, they go in there, it's not up, but it's a bridge port. So it goes through the bridge thing, bridging decision, it's not anything for the local process, it was just to bridge through. In my mind, it shouldn't have hit any of those IP rules, but apparently it did. So I had to put this rule here saying accept it, even if it's just going in and out of the same bridge interface. But here's the thing, on this desktop here, I can show you a default nothing setup NFT uh, rule set. You can see there's nothing here and it just says, well, nothing. But what it's got is this flush rule set. And that means when you run this, it clears all existing rules and then runs your rules. So I couldn't, just going back to the other one, I couldn't just add that rule here in a, where is it? I couldn't just add that rule with that same thing there, otherwise that would be the only rule there and all this other stuff would be gone. 
So here's what I did. I just created a rule set, but you can see I don't have that flush command here. Like the other one had flush rule set, this one doesn't. So basically I've just made my own little table here saying, hey, um, yeah, still drop everything as a policy, but in this time put that except there. And as you saw, what happens now is in a T list rule set, it goes in there. So all the other stuff's handled by Docker just nicely, and this gets added onto the list, which allowed it to start working. So on the web server, let's just say I do a good old TCP dump on that interface and just look for ICMP. Now I go to the router. Now on the router, I try and ping something that I know has to go through that router. So just that address there. I can ping it. So back on the, uh, the web server, you can see it there. Now if I do, let's have a look, TCP dump. I can do it on the individual interface. Let's say I do it on that one. ICMP. You can see it there. And also the other one, which was EMP3 or so, it's coming out there too. So what I found before when I when I had the problem, it was just going in one side but not coming out the other. So always use, you know, you know how I roll, always use packet captures to see what's actually going on. Anyway, that's what was going on and that's how I got around it. Okay, so I thought I'd share that with you because it was just something that caught me out and I learned from it, so maybe you can too. Anyway, that'll do for now. Till next time, take it easy.